In this video series, I'm going to do three videos essentially on how to do the four different types of calibration frames that you'll need to do to get good astrophotos and basically to eliminate as much noise as you can. And really, we can eliminate just about all the noise that there is. Now, the first one here, we're going to talk about darks. Darks are not the most complicated and they're certainly not the hardest to do, but they take the largest amount of time. And I actually spend more time doing darks than I do any other type of frame. So let's talk about the three different things that darks are dependent upon. Darks depend on the time, the time of the exposure. They're also dependent upon the ISO that you're using or the gain. And they're also dependent upon the temperature of the camera. Now, that being said, I've got these cameras out here for you today because all of these cameras actually record the temperature that they are taking the picture at. And this guy over here, I know, Olympus, if you're, if you're listening, I'd really love to have temperature recorded to the EXIF data in the file so that we could see it later on. Right now, what I use, I use a heat gun on the camera, which I'll show you how to use in a minute, to basically get the best close estimate that I can of what the temperature of the camera is. Because these dedicated astrophotography cameras record the temperature directly to the file itself, actually even putting it into the name of the files, it makes it very, very easy to basically collect all the calibration frames necessary to subtract the thermal noise from your image. Because that's what darks are attempting to do. We're trying to eliminate all the thermal noise. Now, what I try to do is I try to limit myself to three different exposure lengths. I typically use 60 seconds, 120 seconds, or I use five minute exposures. Um, now some of these cameras, I actually use much longer exposures like this guy right here. I'll take, I'll take 20 minute exposures with this guy, but that's because he's cooled and that's a different story. Next ISO, I also try to limit myself to three different ISOs or three different gain levels. So with my E1 over here, I try to take pictures at ISO 400, 800, or 1600, depending on the target. Next, now the temperature. The temperature is pretty important. So basically, thermal noise is, is very much influenced by temperature. And as temperature goes up, thermal noise goes up too. So let's say if the camera reaches 20 degrees Celsius, okay, every single degree Celsius that the camera's temperature increases above that, so let's say you go to 21 degrees Celsius, thermal noise will double. And as that thermal noise increases, as you go higher and higher and higher, the noise just exponentially climbs faster and faster and faster. Now, by contrast, if you're cold, if the camera is very cold, and this is why I, I try to emphasize to people, try and do your photography in the wintertime. It's the best time because the equipment is cold and thermal noise is low. Uh, well, then you get less noise. And, and that actually, the curve, so to speak, of the noise actually flattens out a lot. So as temperature decreases, let's like, let's say if you're at minus 10 degrees Celsius, okay? Well, if you go from minus 10 degrees Celsius to minus nine degrees Celsius or minus 11 degrees Celsius, there isn't going to be a huge difference. It's not going to double or half the amount of noise like it will up at higher temperatures, but at lower temperatures, it might take five or even 10 degrees Celsius of change in order to double the noise when you're at those lower temperatures. All right, so this is how I go about taking my dark. So all you need to do is cover your camera. And I would actually recommend that you do this in a dark place. Believe it or not, I have had through the camera, even with the lens cap on and actually covered in a black blanket, I have had light get into the sensor and spoil my darks, especially when you're taking really long exposures, like five minutes. I've, I've had it happen. Now I use a thermal gun. I always tilt the screen out. I try, we're trying to get the screen away from the camera because this thing does generate heat and we want to minimize heat as much as possible. And so what I do is I take a reading off the back here where the sensor is and I try to maintain a consistent distance. Basically I take this rubber thing and I put it right up against the edge of the screen. I kind of use that to gauge my distance and I try to aim for the same spot which is right dead in the middle and I take a reading and then I record that reading along with the time. Now Olympus builds an intervalometer into their cameras which is actually really nice but it's just got one little handicap for this and that's that it is limited to a 60 second exposure. So 
Um, you can get one of these intervalometers, which I've got one here. It attaches to the shoe and goes into the USB port. And this is how I take my darks that are much longer than uh, 60 seconds. But here, let's show you how to set up. And it's fairly simple. So we're going to go into the menu here. Up to the very first shooting sequence. And we're going to turn on time lapse. And I'm, you can see here I've got 64 frames selected. Uh, you can set up the interval time, which is the time in between. I just hit OK. I've noticed this thing has a tendency to turn off on you, but right here at the top, you can see there's a there's a clock with a number on it, and so it's going to just basically start taking pictures one after another at the exposure time that I have the camera already set to. And you have to be a manual, of course, in order to do this. But this is pretty much how I take my darks if I'm using a 60 second or shorter exposure, which typically is not shorter than that. So on my desktop, I keep a folder called calibration frames. And inside here, you'll find a bunch of different calibration frames. We will go through each of these. But for now, we're working on darks, thermal. And as you can see here, I've got a whole bunch of folders filled and there's 38 degrees Fahrenheit and then you've got the name and the ISO and then the shutter speed and then of course the date that it was taken so speaking of the date typically you want to redo your calibration frames about once a year and so that's why I keep the date on here but looking down through here you see you can see I've actually got calibration frame for just about every single temperature every single ISO range, every single shutter speed range that I can take. Now let's go into one of these folders and I want to show you something neat here. So notice the size. These are all 39 degrees Fahrenheit. These were taken after the camera's temperature stabilized. See how the size is actually staying fairly consistent. Just as a demonstration, this is 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's look at something that's 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Notice that the file, this is still a black picture, lens cap, no no light on here, nothing re recorded except for the noise. 19.9 megabytes. Okay, let's look at another one here. So we'll do another view here. Notice here too, you can see there's a little bit of variation in the temperature of the camera. The file is increasing and decreasing in size based on the temperature of the camera itself. So these are some pictures that I took last year of Andromeda, and I want you to notice the megabyte size of the file. So when I first took the camera outdoors, it was already warmed up, I'd already been taking pictures with it. You can see the camera was actually kind of hot, and as the night progressed, okay, after the sun went down, temperatures dropped, and the temperature of the camera dropped also, and along with that, the noise decreased. Now I'm taking the exact same picture of the exact same part of the sky. But because there's less and less noise, as the camera gets cooler and cooler and cooler throughout the night, the megabyte size drops. And because I basically took recordings at different intervals of the temperature that the camera was at using my thermal gun, I can kind of clump these into groups. And then I can take those groups and process them, subtracting thermal darks that I've taken for that particular temperature and thus get the greatest amount of noise reduction. Lastly, I want to cover how many photographs you should take or how many darks you should take. The answer is really as many as you can. Every single time you square the number of darks that you're taking, you're going to actually decrease the noise by 50%, as you can kind of see here in the formula. So when you take your first dark picture, and this is actually what Olympus's uh, low light noise reduction system does. It takes a single dark and it subtracts this. The problem with taking a single dark is that the random element of thermal noise actually increases by 40 percent. That's because the dark that we're subtracting has random noise in it and the image itself has random noise in its dark element. So by taking one, yes we, we take out just about all the thermal noise but we're left with a little bit of random noise. So what we do is we take many many darks and we combine them together. And every single time you square the number of photos you're taking, you're decreasing the noise. So for example, when you go from one dark to two darks, you're going to cut the, that noise in half. When you go from two darks to four darks, 
then you're going to cut that noise in half. When you go from 4 darks to 16 darks, you're going to cut that noise in half, etc. and so forth. Now, I kind of stop at 256 because once you go past 256, you have to get to like 63,000 something in order to get one more stop after that. And, and at that point, that's so much image data that my computer wouldn't be able to handle it. Eliminating noise is all about breaking the noise up into smaller and smaller components. There are many different types of noise that all get combined together and thrown into your image. And by taking the different types of calibration frames and darks is one of them, we're separating out that particular type of noise and then we're dealing with that noise by itself. And that is the best way to get rid of noise. Doing it after the fact when all the noise is stacked together in an image in something like Photoshop or Camera Raw just isn't as good as doing it this way. Now this picture right here, this is both, both these pictures are 50 minutes exposures total and they are pictures of the Andromeda Galaxy. So you can see the one on the left taking it 86 degrees Fahrenheit and the one on the right taking it 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Just look at the difference in noise.